you gotta do what you gotta do to get what you gotta get. Sometimes the work, sometimes the road ain't gonna be always straight. Sometimes you're gonna have a career, you're gonna have this career, you're gonna have that career, you're gonna have bumps in the road, but you gotta keep straight no matter what. You're gonna get things thrown at you, you're gonna get challenges thrown at you, but you gotta keep on the straight and never gonna keep going forward to get where you wanna get. I gotta grind. If I don't need to leave, I gotta do me now. And that's doing the things that other people aren't doing. If I be on my phone every day, I want to get this. I want to get that. I want to make this. I want to make that. You have the opportunity to do it now. So go get it. It's not going to be handed to you. Go get it. Welcome back to the DJ Henderson podcast. I'm your host, DJ Henderson, and this is season six. Man, it's been a it's been a journey. We've been at it for a little over a year, about a year and a half now. And I just really appreciate everybody that's been supporting the show. Even if this is your first time tuned in, I really appreciate the support. Season six this is going to be a big season, a lot of high level guests, but I just want to take the time to say thank you for tuning in and supporting the show. If you're not already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications so you never miss a show, drop a like and a comment down below. All those things would be greatly appreciated to help me out, help the channel out and continue to support the show in those ways. I really appreciate it. And we're going to get right to this episode. Let's get it. Chaz Neal, welcome to the show. I appreciate it, DJ. Appreciate it for having me. I want to say thank you for coming on here. It means a lot to me. Uh, we've been good friends for a real, real long time. So I'm glad we were able to make this happen. It didn't take me too much to get you on here. So I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Well, facts. I mean, yeah, like you said, we've been boys since, uh, you know, since we were kids and, uh, you know, playing basketball and everything together. I just was like, hey, podcast, let me support my boy. I got fathers. Yeah, tune in. And I got you. For sure. I appreciate it for real, for real. Uh, we just kind of touched on it. I'm from Tampa, Florida. We grew up together. Talk to me about coming up in Tampa, what your upbringing was like and what the city means to you. I mean, Tampa, honestly, Tampa means a world to me. You know, I love Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, families in Tampa, you know, just growing up in Tampa, um, moving from, you know, moving from across Fletcher the hood to the suburbs. I mean, it's like, it's like living there, having a better opportunity. My family moved me out of there so I can have a better opportunity for life. And, um, you know, for me, I feel like it, it was great living in Tampa, living in Tampa, meeting y'all, meeting new people, networking with new people, and just getting to the place I am now. It's lovely. Most definitely. I think you moving from where you was to where you ended up, I think that's definitely a good thing. I think that's something that people our age kind of frown upon, like, oh, you live here, you do this. But I never really kind of understood that whole concept. Like people be, people really be mad that your parents did something for you that they wanted to do. Like, I definitely feel that for sure. I think it's opportunities everywhere, but obviously it's better opportunities in certain places. So I feel that for sure. Yeah, I mean, like you said, people, people gonna be envious you all the time. You're gonna have your haters. You're gonna have people, you're gonna have people that's behind you the whole time. And those are people, people that stay behind you no matter what you do, those are people that you continually need to have as your friends and your group, your circle. So, I mean, I'm cool with people I've lost, I'm cool with people I gained, but the people I gained are more influential in my life than people I lost, so I'm cool with that. Most definitely. We talked about coming up together. You mentioned us playing basketball together. Right now you're playing football at the collegiate level. Talk to me about how you got introduced to the game of football. Football, okay, cool. Uh, so moving with my father, um, I was about nine. Uh, I was I was kind of I was big fat yeah growing up yeah I was a little fat and then I stayed with him uh, started eating the right things healthy uh, start playing sports uh, when I played I played uh, I started Pee Wee I uh, played with Copeland Park Saints in uh, Tampa um, and the founder uh, Miss Tracy she was Tracy Hawkins she was there so uh, my dad was like okay let's let's do this so I'm doing Copeland I'm going to Copeland playing there and playing football it was like it was great and then I was like I did for at first at first playing football I didn't like it at all um because like the work I never I was I wasn't really active like that and I started getting active and everything and just started to love it um I felt like football is somewhere you can hit somebody or you can take your physical strength out on somebody and not get in trouble for it so if you are in school and you mad at somebody you can take it out in practice and uh, also, I was a kicker as well. So I was like, I used to, my coach was like, the only way for you to become a kicker 
you go, you gotta hit this dude right here, kick him with the ball. So as soon as you know, took that three steps and kicked him straight square in the head with the ball. I wasn't trying to, but it just happened. And uh, yeah, I just so I mean from then on, I was a kicker, played center, played the end, and I just stayed at the end. And yeah, I loved it. Just loved it from there. I definitely feel that. That's something that I used to think about all the time when I was playing football, literally just have a bad day or a good day, just be able to just go play football, get to hit people. Obviously, you wasn't trying to go crazy on your teammates, but like you definitely get to let some of your aggression out, just a way that you could channel your bad energy that you had coming from school. It's crazy to think about having bad days at school as a kid versus what we living in now and actually having real bad days. But I definitely used to think about it the same way when I used to be playing football as well. Thanks. When did you know that playing football is what you wanted to do down the line? When did you decide to lock in and take the game seriously? Uh, uh, let's see. High school. Probably high school, yeah. My ninth year year, I didn't play high school ball my ninth year year. I was at Freedom. I didn't play. I was still, because I was still in Little League. I felt like I wanted to master that before I went to high school. So Little League played. I was with, uh, we, we transitioned from Copeland Park to the Tampa Bay Hurricanes, Tampa, uh, Tampa Bay Hurricanes. And uh, with the same, with the same one as Tracy Hawkins, um, I had some other coaches that upgraded me, Coach Julius, Kylie, all those coaches. Uh, uh, and um, I rest up, RP, uh, both of them. But um, from then, in ninth grade, I was like, okay, cool. I loved it. Let's go. So 10th grade, you hit. I went to uh, transfer to Armwood, from Freedom to Armwood. And when I was at Armwood, I was consistently playing. I um, started to love it even more. Coach Callahan, Sean Callahan, actually introduced the game to me where I started to love it. And from then on, I just was like, okay, I love it. And then my dream year, broke my leg. You know, and I was like, okay, basketball is out, uh, is out of there. So I can't play basketball no more. I got scholarships in football. Let me just take football. At the time I was committed to FSU, they were still standing in the paint. I had other offers too, you know, down the US, uh, USC, um, South Carolina, Southern California. Let me get those out of the way because USC is can be in two places. Um, you know, Florida was still there, but I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna stay with football. So I rehabbed, just played football, and I just committed, committed to FSU. Stayed committed and just continued my NIL and signed it. For sure. I feel like a lot of people that's not from our area, they heard you say you transferred from Freedom to Armwood. But just talk to me about that transition. That's a very big transition. Armwood, one of the top teams in the country pretty much all the time. You play with a lot of high-level players while you was there. You only play one year. You talked about getting injured, but talk to me about the experience just going from freedom to Armwood, taking the game more serious. Me and your coach that helped you start to love the game. Like, what was all of that about just getting to Armwood and that experience? Honestly, uh, freshman year, transitioning to my sophomore year, I didn't know anything about Armwood. All I knew was because I, when I grew up, I went to I went to the games. I knew some. About me, I, I knew I played football. But I went to games. I was young. I, I, I remembered it, but I really didn't. Um, but it was a mentor I had named Josh Grady. This was also my cousin, and um, you know he he was like, you know what? Uh, he showed me how to actually be somebody and actually be successful growing up. So I was like, hey, I might want to do it this way. I might, I might have just took the road from him when he was at Arnwood. He was a quarterback at Arnwood. Um, but I was like, you know what, let's do it like this. So transitioned to Arnwood, went to Arnwood, met Coach Callahan, uh, didn't have to play JV. I went straight to varsity. And then it was like one game I did play JV because I wasn't getting enough reps or Coach wanted to see something. I don't know, I don't know his, uh, his motive was behind it, but I just did it. So play play one JV game. I had seven sacks that game. I did not touch JV no more. Um, and that was that. Yeah. And then that's where I was like, I gotta take this seriously for real. I can't be on JV games anymore. I gotta start playing varsity all the way through. So play sophomore year. Like I said, I was committed. 
Then I transitioned to uh, Wesley Chapel my last year. Um, yeah. And now I'm, now I'm here. If you're tuned into this show through YouTube, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with anybody you think should tune in. If you're listening to the show through a podcast service or a streaming website, please subscribe to the show, leave a five-star rating, and leave a review. Leave your thoughts down below on what you think about the show. You talked about the change in your mindset when you play a little bit of JV, you played a JV game, you went crazy, and you told yourself you had to start playing varsity, proving yourself, getting reps on varsity. Um, you talked about your recruiting, you had a bunch of offers, but what was it like getting to that point? Like, what was the grind like getting to that point? Because a lot of people, if I ain't asked this question, people would hear, oh, he played JV, and then he just ended up getting UF and USC and Bama and all these high-level schools, all these Power Five, SEC, Pac-10, like all these crazy level schools. But what went into the grind, though? Like, what was the grind like? Just tell people that it ain't that easy. It ain't easy as it just sounded. Well, I mean, as far as the grind, uh, so besides, let me, since we're talking football, I'm going to get knock it out of the way. I worked out consistently. Uh, school workouts. Then I went to Impact Fitness afterwards. Impact Fitness was in Luke. Uh, it was in New Tampa. And then they transitioned to Loops. Now they're in Loops, uh, Florida. So I went there consistently throughout the school year. My 10th grade year, 11th grade year after I got done with my injury. And then my 12th grade year, I consistently did that. It was, uh, I had my two coaches were Denny Lacasio uh, and Biko Claxton. Those was my two coaches. Um, so I had those consistently. I was consistently doing that. And then as far as everything else, when I started talking to the um, the causes they asked me, okay, so what's they asked when they started talking about coaches, they asked me, okay, what's your GPA? They told me GPA, GPA is good, boom. Did you pass this test? This uh SAT, ACT test, did that, boom. And then the highlight film spoke for itself. So I mean I did I did the little camps. I did the I went up to the schools, did the camps, went up there, seen business and everything. It was great. So I mean it's not just the football aspect of it. You also got to be good in the classroom. Being good in the classroom will get you those offers as well because, yeah, you can have a five-star on your team, but if the five-stars grades aren't good, it's going to be hard for them to get into school as well as you could be good as well, and they'll give you a chance. And that's just the way of life. This is how life is. You, you might have a five-star go Juco, and then if you got the grades, you're good enough, they give you the same opportunity that they're giving him. I feel like, honestly, I feel like it's easier to get a, a scholarship in football than it is basketball. And yeah, if you're trying to feed your family, football is the way to go. But if your passion is basketball, hey, you can do basketball, but you're going to have to work twice as hard because somebody else, even in football, you have to work twice as hard because somebody else, somewhere else, while you sleep and work, that's just how the world evolves. So that's how I feel like. With the whole transition, that's how I felt. It was good. It was good for me. It's definitely major. I think when I, I remember going back to when that time was happening in real life, when I heard you was transferring from freedom to Armwood, that's when I kind of knew. I was like, yeah, he not he not going to be probably playing basketball that seriously because obviously Armwood, that's like a powerhouse football program. You're going to be around other high-level D linemen, O linemen, running backs everything so you're going to be just getting better and better just being in that environment plus the extra work you was putting in on the side so like it didn't really surprise me when you started getting your offers you signed FSU like all that kind of stuff I kind of could see it coming so I'm pr I'm definitely happy for you proud of you everything you've done so far everything you plan to do in the future for sure that's definitely I mean like like I said and then the whole thing is I mean like the people I've seen people go from uh, Armwood to IMG or from there was other schools at IMG. It doesn't matter what school you go to. As long as you working, as long as you putting that ground in and your film speaks for itself, coaches will come find you and give you and get you those offers. They're gonna come get you. If you're good, they're gonna come get you. That's, that's how I feel. For sure. You talked about the offers that you did have. You ended up choosing Florida State. Talk to me about that. What went into that decision? You were part of Jimbo Fisher's last recruiting class before he left to go to Texas a and Coach Taggart came in. Um, talk to me about that, how you ended up choosing Florida State. Well, see, Florida State was my 
um, dream school uh, since I was about 10. I was a Florida Gator um, because my uncle went to Florida, but I mean, that's all I knew at the time, but then I transitioned over and I was like, oh, my granddad loved Florida State. Granddad passed away. I was his favorite place. Favorite place. So I was like, that was my dream school as well. I was like, oh, well, let's, let's go there. But I didn't pick it off. My granddad, I was picking it off based off of me. I loved it. So I was like, okay, let me let me go here. Um, and like I said, it was a dream school. I, I could have picked somewhere else, but hey, you go through challenges and the challenges that you go through, you end up being a you end up being a better person after the challenges you go through. So I feel like God puts you in challenges for a reason to see you overcome those challenges. So as far as that, I mean, me being in Coach Jimbo's class, him Trent, him leaving and going to Texas and them, that whole thing, I feel like, yeah, we had a number one recruiting class, number one offense, number one defense that year. When he left, everybody left except three of us. Uh, it was me, uh, Robert Cooper, and Demarcus Adams. It was a, it was the three out of that whole signing class that stayed committed. Then Coach T came over and he liked us. I mean, Coach T liked us. He liked me, Coop, and D Mark. Um, so he kept our scholarships as well as the other people that um, got added on to the class. And we still ended up being in the top 10 in the class. So, or either if not top 10, it was top 20, but I know we were still in the top rankings for our class. So, yeah, I just felt like I felt home when Coach T came. I was like, okay, cool. Let me go, let me go work. For sure. When choosing schools at such a young age, it can definitely be a tough task. Talk to me about what you would, what advice you would give to somebody that's up and coming that's looking at you or just anybody that's striving to be a college athlete. Like what advice would you give them for the recruiting process, what they might see here, go through what they need to be on the lookout for? Well, the first thing I would say is like when, when you're doing when you're looking at college, when you're going, looking at colleges, football, everything like that, or even if other sports, when you're meeting the coaches on campus for the first time, make sure it feels like home because you'll never get, you're going to get homesick and the distance from it, everything, everything like that. Eventually you have to grow up and just deal with it, but you're going to get homesick that first year. In the first three months, you might get homesick and some people might not like, honestly, I didn't. I was I was glad to be away from home. I had my own rules, live by myself. So I felt like, yeah, I can do me. But I mean, that sense, um, if you get injured, the second thing, if you get injured, make sure that's somewhere you would want to be. Like, yeah, you got football and everything, but I saw the football. Like, you I saw the football, you you, you know, I was like, dang. And I was whenever I got injured at where I was like, okay, yeah, I still like this school. So I'm glad I'm still I'm still here. Um and then third, I see this whole thing with these transfers and everything and, and, and the portal and everything. They don't hit the portal unless you know you have a home and you know you got somewhere to go. And then like as a quote I seen when I was transferring, it was like painful endings bring the best new beginnings. And for me, that was like, I, I transitioned with them boys my freshman year, all my teammates that's graduated, that's are about to graduate, and I still playing at FSU. I graduated them, but graduated with them, but I have to do what's best for me. And pay for endings, bringing the best new beginnings, that's me doing what I need to do to get to, to the NFL. So I gotta do me. You gotta be selfish. And that's something in college football that you have to do. You have to be selfish and you have to be able to sometimes just worry about yourself. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I think I think you said a lot of things that's very important. I think definitely people hitting the transfer portal, like that's becoming kind of crazy now since COVID and the rules change and stuff like that, how you're able to transfer a play right away. I think People, a lot of people do hit the portal with no with no real plan. They just think, oh, since since I think I'm good, I could just hit the portal and just find a new place to go. But like, it's not necessarily like that. If you're not 
if you're not just if you're in film and like, you're not just jumping off the wall like it's really it's literally thousands of other people doing the same thing so like it's a it's a chance like i've seen it like you've probably seen it too people hit the portal thinking it was going to be sweet and gravy getting to a new school and they end up out of school and not playing football and not getting an education so i think that's major for sure and i also think like you do got to be selfish to a certain extent that don't mean just be a bad person be be bad to your teammates your coaches all that kind of stuff but you got to you got to put you first as far as sports and just life period. Like if you don't put yourself first, nobody else going to take you as serious. So I think that's key for sure. Just put yourself right. first, being selfish. And to sure. If you're tuned into this show through YouTube, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with anybody you think should tune in. If you're listening to the show through a podcast service or a streaming website, please subscribe to the show leave a five-star rating, and leave a review. Leave your thoughts down below on what you think about the show. And that selfish part, man, like, I mean, you be on, you be on your phone every day. Or I don't know if you be, if I be on my phone every day, I want to get this. I want to get that. I want to make this. I want to make that. You have the opportunity to do it now, so go get it. It's not going to be handed to you. Go get it. So that's what, I'm, that's what I'm dealing with right now. Like, I'm trying to be a little bit more selfish for me. And if that's hurting people's feelings, I don't care. I got to do me. I got to get me because I'm able to, like, I'm looking for the future. I'm able to take my parents out of the situation. Even though they're in a good situation, I'm able to make sure they don't have no debt or nothing. My little brother and my other siblings that I got, I'm able to take care of them if I, want, if I need to, when I need to. I mean, if they need the help, I can take care of them. And then my family, for generations to come, be wealthy. So, I mean, you have the opportunity to, like, Coaches and everything, they give you an opportunity to do it. You just got to get it. I just turned 21 a couple of weeks ago. And, like, right. even a little bit before then, like, I was just thinking, like, hey, nobody, like, your parents can only do so much for you. Like, your family can only do so much. Like, at the end of the day, it's really just you. Like, nobody going to come babysit you, hold your hand, save you from anything that life throw at you. You just got to, like, start to just figure it out, take it day by day, progress, not – go backwards and just try to figure it out so I've just been kind of thinking about that like obviously I'm not I'm not personally to the point where I could just support myself right now at this very moment but I'm trying to start thinking as if I had to just so when that time comes I'm not like a fish out of water you know what I'm saying all right so I mean like like you said like like people say it's a real word out there and if you if you got a chance to be a kid the whole time even though you're not you don't feel like you're a kid like yeah you're 21 22, like, I'm just turned 22 Thursday. So it's like, if you got a chance to be a kid, be a kid as long as you can and see you making your own. But I don't say be a kid too long because time will catch up with you. The days are long, but the years are fast. Like you said, we was just, remember, we was just boys and we was playing ball. So it's like, that, that caught up with us. Now you turn 21, I just turned 22. So it's like, dang. These years moving by fast, but these days are long, and we just was going through work. And it's like, dang, now, now we we're a different age, and life is really coming at us fast. So I feel like, like like I said, be a kid as long as you can, and take advantage. Of that. Definitely, I like that. The days are long, but the years is fast. That's facts. There ain't nothing but facts for sure. You talked about FSU. Coach Taggart came in. Talk to me about building a relationship with him. He became your coach at FSU. After you finished up there, you transfer. You in Boca right now at FAU. Coach Taggart, he down there right now, too, is your head coach there. Talk to me about the relationship there. What made you want to leave FSU and come to FAU when, when he came here? My relationship with Coach T, I was getting uh, recruited by Coach T. He was at USF a while ago. Um, I think I was I was about in the eighth. I think I was in eighth grade. I was about eighth or ninth grade when I was getting recruited by Coach T. So no, I was probably yeah, I was in eighth grade. I was in eighth grade. I was getting recruited by Coach T. Um, so that relationship's been there ever since eighth grade. He he was recruiting me when he was at uh, Oregon. I just don't want to go that far. It was too far. Even though they got you know, at that time I was like, like I was like FSU, James, who already got that commitment. Oregon, far, very far. But they, I mean, they got they got the shoes. They got the the clothing, they don't wear the same jersey twice every year. After that, they get all those jerseys at the end of the year. Great school right now with this NIL. It's a great school 
if I knew NIL was in, I probably would have went. I ain't going to hold you. But, I mean, with that situation, I feel like the Taggart family, not just Coach Taggart, because we played with Lil Willie in basketball. So the Taggart family is great. I've been knowing the Taggart family for a minute. And I just, just having that, just knowing that and having that relationship was great when he uh, transitioned to FSU. So when he transitioned to FSU, I mean, I was one of his, I was, I was in his first class, even though I was in Coach Jimbo's class. When a new coach come over, that's technically their first class, even though they have to find the right pieces of that class. But knowing him helped me keep that off. And it's on, this world is about connections. So if you got the connections, you should succeed in this world. But staying at FSU, the connections, boom. Uh, transfer, uh, fast forward. So Coach Tag getting fired from um, FSU, him coming down here to Boca. I stayed, uh, Coach Norville, Mike Norville, he came in the next year. Uh, we built the connection. You know, everything was in pieces and cream, but we built the connection. And, you know, I'm not going to speak on it. Coaches come in, they want to, they play their guys, or, you know, I'm not going to speak on it too much, but everything he's doing at the university, love it. It's good. He continued to do it. I was FSU nothing but the best. Because once you know, you always know. So I continue to push for that. Um, everything he's doing, he should change FSU around. He, genu he genuinely cares about his players. I can say that. He really does. Because once I told him I was uh, thinking about hitting the transfer portal, the man cried, I broke down and cried. I haven't seen that from a lot of coaches, but he broke down and cried. So, and I was like, I thought he was just, you know, just in our in behind for all the wrong reasons, but he genuinely cried. And, you know, he was like, it's more than just football. So I honestly felt that before I left, it's more than just football. Um, you're not going, you're not going, honestly, you're not going to get along with all your coaches. I'm not speaking on Coach Nervous because me and Coach Nervous have a really great relationship, but you're not going to get along with all your coaches. But sometimes you never know what they're doing might benefit you in the long run. So that's that. So me transitioning from FSU to FAU, like I said, it's connections. I hit the portal. Um, and I said, I had some homes to go to. Some of them was D1. But I honestly didn't have the, enough film to go to those schools. So I had to prove myself. So I came down here at FAU. Um, it was a chance for me to take a starting job. Take a starting job. So I'm starting right tackle here. Had my film, played a full season last year. And it was like, hey, felt, felt great. But now it was ground time. This year it was ground time even more because I'm going to my two last years. But I got to grind. If I don't need to leave, I got to do me now. And that's doing the things that other people aren't doing. That's from yoga, getting more flexible, um, extra massages, hot yoga, cryotherapy, eating the right foods, all that. Just being on top of your diet. And I mean, it, it coming down here to Boca is, Boca is lovely, rich, rich community. I uh, met Mrs. Uh, Schmidt, Barbara Schmidt. She's a great person here at uh, FAU. She uh, built us a $16 million uh, building. So it's like, we got our own building uh, for workouts, meeting rooms, um, coaches' offices. And we got our own locker room with a training facility underneath the stadium, the stadium built, big stadium. And it's, it feels like paradise out here, palm trees, everything, it's nice. And it's nothing but billionaires and millionaires, honestly, but I haven't seen anybody below that. I mean, all I, I see Teslas every day, Range Rovers, Bentleys, Mercedes, all the foreign cars you you can think about. They out here in McLaren's, and it's close to it's really close to Miami. You got doctors, billionaires out here. You got you got a board of trustees that's rich. You got that's a lot of people out here. That it's money out here, and with this whole NIL thing, I feel like this is this is a really great area for it. But you just gotta meet those people, shake the right hands, build those connections. You know, you can get what you want, but transition out here with Coach Tag, it feels great. It just it felt like home, and I, I already I already had a home with him, so I was like, let me come down here, show my worth, show my worth last year, and I gotta continue to show my worth even more. For sure. I got, I got things I gotta critique. I got 
people I need to train with. And I just got to build on me, be selfish and build on me. Most definitely. Shout out to Coach Tag, the whole the whole Tiger family, Lil Will, you know, it's my dog. Sure. Um, shout out to Mr. Roger, too. You shouted out your pops earlier. Shout out. I just want to shout out everybody on here that, that we mentioned. Then say, then say shout out to. Yeah, shout out to my mama. Uh, yeah, you know, my mama, she, my mom, she, everybody don't know this, but my mom, I refer to her my mom, but she my stepmom, but she my mom, because she raised me from nine to, I want to say, or to now. And I'm not her blood, but she took me in as a child. So it's like she took me in as I as I was her own. And um I mean just because you blood don't mean that's really your family. Cause honestly, I got this from one of my dad's friends, but love is what love does. So that that basically means that you can tell me that you love me, but if you're not showing it by actions, what is it? So that's why that's why my circle is so small. Because if you're not showing me by actions that you love me, or you're not showing me that you want to be 150 percent into me, I don't want you around me. Because I honestly believe in the people that are successful, or the people that you have around you that are successful, or are consistently doing something with their life. You end up mimicking their lifestyle and also being successful. If you hang around the wrong crowds and you have bad people around you, you end up doing that. But it's something, it's something a part of you where you can still have that, but you got to just, like I said, you got to be selfish. You got to spread yourself apart from that. I think that's definitely major, just who you are, who you surround yourself with. You hear that all the time. But, like, when you take a step back and actually try to change who you're around, be around the right people versus the wrong people, you can see it when you're with the wrong people too. But, obviously, you want to see it when you're with – people that's pushing you to do better so you can become your better self. So I definitely understand that. That's major. I be I think about that a lot too, just being around the right people, trying to be in the right rooms, right situations. You talked about the amount of people down there in that area. I'd be thinking about like going to a place like that, like just being around all those people. I'd be thinking about networking, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely on the right track. Boca, that's, a, that's the perfect place for the NIL. I've never been down there, but just everything I heard, I got a couple friends that go to FAU. You go there, hearing you talk about it, sound like it's the place to be. Sound like paradise for sure. If you're tuned into this show through YouTube, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with anybody you think should tune in. If you're listening to the show through a podcast service or a streaming website, please subscribe to the show, leave a five-star rating, and leave a review. Leave your thoughts down below on what you think about the show. Talked about transitioning from FSU to FAU with Coach Taggart. You talked about playing right tackle. Uh, all your life, you've been playing on the defensive side of the ball. Now you're at the college level, switched to the offensive line. Talk to me about that transition, how you were able to do that, and what it's been like so far. Uh, uh, like I said, yeah, with Coach, uh, with Coach Jimbo, I was, I was getting recruited as the DN. Uh, Coach Taggart came over. He felt the best interest for me was to play offensive line. At first, I didn't want to. I didn't want to play because my natural build, if you look at me, if you see me in public, people are like, oh, you look like a gym. So I was like, yeah. I know. But hey, you can't control the, You can't control your narrative when you're in college after you sign those papers. Coaches control your narrative. And you just got to go with it. Because at the end of the day, they can drop you or you can hit the portal now. And, they just give you a scholarship to somebody else, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So I came in the uh, FSU 250. Uh, took me some time to gain some weight. Within a year, uh, I was eating deadly snacks. I was eating all the bad foods to get up to 300 pounds. So I had to do what I had to do. So I was eating bread. I was eating all that. I had to do what I had to do. I got up to 300. Got 310. Of course, like, okay, time to put in some work. So um, we started chiseling it. Uh, Critiquing it, getting the body, body fat off of me, uh, getting my body fat under 20%. So, and uh, yeah, so now I'm about 317. Um, slim with it, lean with it, eating the right foods and, and everything. So it's like, that's that's great. But yeah, because T, T made that decision. And it was like, basically his whole decision about it, you can play DN, 
and you can play, you can try and play up to 15 years, but on the offensive line, if you take care of your body, you do the right things, you can play 10 to 15 years making some really good money. And if you play on the same team, that's four, eight, 12, that's what, three and a half, maybe four seasons. If you go 16 years, that's four seasons. And your second contract usually is the biggest contract, or you might get just your biggest contract in the third year. But getting that first contract and then getting that second contract, that second contract is where you can take care of the family. That's where you can really retire and really invest your money how you really want to. You go from being a millionaire to a billionaire with that second contract if you do it the right way. And I mean, I feel like he put me in the best situation as far as me playing tackle to achieve my goal. That's real. I be, I think your mindset, that's the right mindset. You talked about Coach Tagger making that decision for you. Like you said, I think that was the best decision. That's probably, that. I think it will end up being the best decision for your career that's ever been decided because left tackles, right tackles make good money. All, every, most people in the NFL make good money, but left tackles, they make, they make the real thing. They want the highest paid players on the team. So, and like you said, it could help you with longevity too, just taking care of your body, doing what you got to do. I think the NFL is obtainable, like you just said. You do a lot of charity work, a lot of things for the community. You like to be involved in the community. Uh, I just want to know where that where that came from, where that attitude came from, what makes you continue to do it. I saw that you got you were a part of starting a Lift for Life campaign. Talk to me about that, just all the stuff you do in the community and what drives you to do that kind of stuff. Uh, well, growing up, I mean, going to different schools and everything, I think just like seeing a lot of, seeing a lot of homeless people, seeing a lot of families that were homeless or kids that were born into it. It was like, dang, I have the platform to give back. So that's what I started doing. I just started giving back, started doing charitable work, giving back and everything. And it benefits, it benefits not only you, but it benefits them as well. And it benefits them as like, dang, it's somebody out there that actually cares about me. Little kids, you got older people. It's just building those connections where it's like, yeah, things might not be working the best for you, but hey, we got you, we behind you. And then it's like at FSU, I did all that, got the conference, I got a uh, conference award, ACC, six for six award, six uh, community, it's like, six people for community service hours. And then here at FAU, I got a conference spirit award uh, for FAU service, self-service. And it was like, I wasn't doing it for the awards, I was really doing it because I just love the back. But my ultimate goal uh, above anything else is, this is um, this is thing for, uh, this, I wanna do, I wanna do disabled, blind, um, any kid, any kid really with a severity that God put them on this world for a reason, but nobody knows what it is. But I feel like everybody has a reason there for them being here on earth. So I feel like it's it's this thing for the blind I want to do. And it's gonna be nonprofit eventually. And it's gonna be it's glasses. It's basically it's called eSight. Uh, you can look up eSight. Um their glasses where a blind kid can put them on for the first time and see. Um see for the first time. That's, that's something that, and it's technology that they have where kids can see for the first time. And I know, like, we take that for advantage. Uh, we take it as an, as an advantage. It's like, yeah, we get to see every day. Kids read and braille and can't see at all. It's like, and they don't have the money to afford that, but that's been something where I want to like, okay, Eastside, it's a vision where I want to, you know, at least get nine to 10 of those out a year eventually deal with the company and give them out a lot. So there's a lot less people with, that's blind that can see for the first time, that get the gift of seeing for the first time. And I just, just feel in, as far as community service, I just feel like us as athletes have a platform where you got D1, D2, D3, D4, it don't matter. You have a platform where other people can't get to. And you can use your platform to help out other people. And for me, I feel like helping out other people is something that you can do. It's like, I love it. I love helping out. I love seeing the smile on somebody's face once you just go help them. 
or if you interact with kids, like there's a lot of kids that you interact with, they don't have any brothers or siblings, but they just waiting for somebody else to interact with them. And then the live for life thing, um, that's something we did at FSU. And I mean, it's a it's something where it's um it's spreading awareness. So it's called uplifting athletes. And we uh we tackle it. I'm actually the president here at FS FAU for it. So I'm the president and I got I'm, I got a vice president um named Federico Marangis. So he's the vice president here and we basically um have a a, a counselor that I go to uh named Levi and I talk to him and everything and he coordinates, we coordinate things, coordinate plans. Um, we'll probably do something here in the, in the spring or probably the summer, it'd be another lift, lifting event. Spring, it'd probably be something like, um, I'm trying to see if some of my teammates want to get involved, want to pledge reps to um, to their foundation for every rep they do, um, that somebody can pledge towards it. That's something that I'm probably going to do when I get to that level. Um, but yeah, it's just just giving back it helps. So I feel like giving back helps helps out, and that's something I love. So I think that's something that my parents kind of instilled in me. I used to do a lot of community service stuff. They used to make me do it. I kind of got away from it, but I'm to the point. I'm in the like mental space where they wouldn't really need to make me do that. Like I I would enjoy doing community service. I like working with kids, talking to kids. It's a lot of kids out there. Like you were, you're working with kids that have disabilities and just need somebody in their life. But it's a lot of kids that need an older brother or older sister, just somebody older to be there for them that like they don't have that experience at home. So I feel that for sure. I think that's key that you're doing stuff like that. I think it's only going to come back to you bigger and better in the future. Just doing stuff like that out of the goodness of your heart. I think that's major for sure. If you're tuned into this show through YouTube, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with anybody you think should tune in. If you're listening to the show through a podcast service or a streaming website, please subscribe to the show, leave a five-star rating, and leave a review. Leave your thoughts down below on what you think about the show. What's next for Chaz Neal? What, where, what's going on in the future? Where you see yourself in a couple of years? What's your goals, plans, aspirations, dreams? What you got going on in the future? Next with Chaz now. Okay. Uh, for me, honestly, like I said, being selfish this next year, um, doing doing what I gotta do to get where I need to be, and that could be, like I said, I have a goal of being playing playing in the NFL. Um, cause bro, I'm tall. I'm real tall. I can't I can't go around there and be like, hey, you you play you play in the NFL? I'd be like, nah, I don't play in the NFL. What you do? I, I'm working somewhere. It's like, then he he wastes all his talent because he that big, he that tall, and he ain't doing nothing with it. It's like, so I see myself doing that. I see myself investing in companies, um, using my endorsement money, um, uh, buying a lot of real estate, getting into stocks more, crypto more, because I feel like that's gonna be a, a way that we pay things here in the near future. Um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, cause I'm not, I'm not chasing millions. I'm trying to chase billions. Cause if you chase billions, you already a million. So if you chase billions, you already got a million or you got a couple million or you got a couple hundred million. So if you chase a billion, you're going to be straight. But I'm trying to not only chase a billion for me, but chase a billion for my family. So my family lives down the road, not for everybody. Man. And I can build a lifestyle that I want to build. Because having a million dollars here, that eventually, if you use it the right way, it won't go away. But if you spend it like crazy, it's going to go away. But if you got a billion dollars, it's like you can do whatever you want. You can get whatever you want. You really don't got to worry about your money depreciating and leaving. And, you know, I mean, you you can be set for life. You don't have to worry about retirement funding or anything. You just to make your money, your money, or you can put your money into IRAs or, or fundings or investment accounts or stuff like that. And I mean, yeah, but I feel like the next couple of years with all that, with the NFL and everything, I want to um, probably go in and get a financial advisor, help me out with some things and 
invest uh, invest like crazy into real estate because somebody well, my dad told me somebody's always gonna need somewhere to stay. For sure. And, yeah, I mean just re renovating um bad areas, uh, giving kids, like giving minorities that don't have the um the right tools in school to, you know, have the same lifestyle that other kids have because of how poor the area is or the equipment that they have or the books they have. Just honestly just giving back just in total. I mean after I get done with football, probably either becoming a principal at a school, becoming a coach at a school, probably getting the coaching maybe, or just being a principal and helping kids out. I feel like I'll be one of those cool principals that come to school with a different car every day, be a chair principal, but it's also be disciplined to be a chair principal, you know, do certain things, build the, the connections I have, bring those to the school and, you know, just help kids out even more. So. I think I like, I like what you said there, the, like the billionaire mindset. I think, I think about that all the time. Like, I feel like people sell themselves so short in life so frequently, even with small things like like grades, like people, people would think, oh, it's not possible for, for me to get good grades, but they just like they just reach, they just reach an aim to get a C. And if you reach the aim to get a C, that means you setting yourself up. The best you could get is a C, and everything else after that is no good. So I feel like that mindset as far as anything goes in life is just key. Like if you want, you want to be a millionaire you reaching for a billion you you, you you're probably gonna get to your million at some point because you your mind on the right track they say reach for the star so if you fall you land on the cloud like i think that's the same same kind of mentality i think that's major for sure that's the kind of thinking i'll be on the kind of time i'll be trying to be on just thinking big picture everything is attainable if you could think it you could do it all that kind of stuff all the cliche stuff you hear i think that's major just having that kind of mindset being positive you talked about doing stuff for others again like I think that's the key to success really in life like you said networking doing things for others I think those are two real important things that we talked about today last part of the show I like to call it crunch time you've been playing sports all your life you know what crunch time is can't call it the fourth quarter because not everybody that come on here play a sport that play four quarters but crunch time end of the game situation where you got to lock in do what you got to do for your team um, just the last couple of questions, wrap the show up. What's the best piece of advice that you've ever received? Best piece of advice I've ever received. Dang. That's a lot of advice I've received, bro. <laughs> uh, best advice. I was uh, listening, to, listening to Cam Newton on his YouTube uh, channel. So he came out and said, um, these people, these coaches, these players, these coaches in the NFL, they're playing you a bunch of money to play a sport that you love. They pay you millions and millions of dollars to play a sport that you love. And you can either think about getting it or getting it. And it's, it's probably not the same words, but it's something to that aspect. You got to do what you got to do, get what you want to get. And I use that every day. You gotta do what you gotta do to get what you gotta get. Sometimes the work, sometimes the road ain't gonna be always straight. Sometimes you're gonna have a career, you're gonna have this career, you're gonna have that career, you're gonna have bumps in the road. But you gotta keep straight no matter what. You're gonna get things thrown at you, you're gonna get challenges thrown at you. But you gotta keep on the straight and never gonna keep going forward to get where you wanna get. For sure. That's major. What's something that a random person wouldn't know about you, but your close friends, your family, they know about you? Video, video games, love playing video games. Oh, I can cook. I can cook. A lot of people can't cook, so I can cook. Yeah, I can cook a lot of things, different things. My, my mom, my, uh, my mom, my mom, my grandmother, basically a lot of women in my life taught me how to cook, so I wouldn't have to depend on nobody when I get older. Yeah, cooking. Cooking is something I love to do. What's one or two quotes that you just take with you that you live by that keep you going through your days? The, that quote I gave you earlier in the podcast, painful energy bring the best new beginners. I give that. And then 
uh, one more, one more quote. My coach, uh, I said this to us a couple weeks ago. It was like, you got a line, you got this. A line wakes up every morning, and no matter what, that line needs to eat. So if the line doesn't think about being the fastest or being the strongest. I want to say he's trying to find his way out smart the gazelle. Gazelle's also trying to find their way out smart the line. They have to be faster than one of the fastest or the fastest and the slowest because uh, somebody's going to get eaten that morning. But the moral of the story is if you're going to be a lion, you're going to be a gazelle because either way, you got to survive. Somebody's trying to take something from you and you need to get where you want to get. So that's something I live by. If you could go back in time, tell your younger self a couple of things, what would you tell yourself? I would say just listen, listen. I'll say listen to my uh, listen to my parents always. Consistent listen to parents like I did. Um because honestly, parents only want what's best for you. They've been in this world before you, they know what's coming, they see further than you. A lot of people are like, oh yeah, they don't see further than me. No, your parents see further than you. Um, they know what's in this world, they know how the, the real world is, they've lived it. You just trying to live it. It might be tough with being in a family home, going through things, but I mean, you're in that situation, and sometimes that situation might be bad, but you gotta overcome that situation. Um, for me, I would have been like, just keep on the straight and narrow, continue to do what you do. And yeah, just know later on in life, the world gets better. What's your why? What keeps you motivated to keep doing big things, striving for greatness? Uh, family. My family is my why. I'm family. I'm a family, man. Family oriented, man. So my family is my why. And my family is not just my blood family. My family is my family that's not blood. Uh, family is my friendships that I've made over the years. Uh, family is my circle that I have, my small circle I have, the people that I hold dear and near towards me to be the best me I can be. So that's my family. If you could meet and spend a day with three people, dead or alive, who would they be and why? Meet and spend a day with three people. Uh, since I'm a business, I was a business major. I would say, I would say Bill Gates. Um, uh, Steve Jobs. And then let's go. Um, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs. And I would say Teron Armstead. He's a, uh, he's an offensive tackle for the New Orleans Saints, the Saints. So he's an offensive line, he's an offensive tackle for the Saints. Very good. Uh, but I would want to pick his brain, um, just get some some new information on playing tackle because he's been in the league so long. He's really good at what he does. Um, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates to speak for himself. I mean, a billionaires. Or, I mean, yeah, Steve Jobs was once a, he's still a bit, yeah, he's still a bit there. He wants to be Steve Jobs, yeah. One of them, yeah, one of them. But yeah, they're both billionaires, that's what I'm saying. So I would want to find out how to become a billionaire, what, um, what crypto or stock stocks they're invested in, that I should be invested in. What can I do at this young age and get to their level of status? So, yeah, that's why. For sure. I like that three. I keep track of people's three people. I like I like that. You probably I think you're the first person that ever said Steve Jobs. I think a lot of people forget how important, how vital he was to everything we got going on today. He's major for sure. I'm I'm planning on getting his book, his autobiography, tuning into that because I know that's probably it probably got some of the information you're looking for. I'm looking for in there just talking about what he went through and all this, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, Steve Jobs, that's my. That's my favorite pick out of them three. I like that. Bill Gates, obviously. Mr. Armstead, definitely a high-level player. Last question. Last question I ask everybody on the show. Uh, who should I have on here next? Who should I have on my show next? Whoever you say, you got to plug me in. You got to help me get them. Who's somebody you think would be a good guest on here? 
take it back. Let's take it back. Uh, let's go basketball. Let's go DJ Gooden. Remember DJ? For sure. Yeah. DJ Gooden. Yeah, I think, yeah, that would be, yeah. The light skin. Uh, he was like, yeah, a little small light skin. Really, really good. Let's go DJ Gooden. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, that's that's a little bro. We're going to take it back to Slack. Let's, let's, let's take it back. Either him or get a tag Darian in here, unless you already hit Darian. Yeah, I already. You know, you know that's already. You already got, you already got something. All right, time to get DJ. Time to get DJ. I said DJ. All right, for sure. DJ Gooden, my dog, if you see this, come tap in with the show. You've been requested. I think it would be good. DJ, he, he playing a Juco right now on his Juco grind. Yeah. I've, I've seen well, DJ. DJ caught a body the other day. He posted on Instagram. Oh, body. Yeah. I've seen that. DJ, if you see this, come tap in. I'm going to send this to you so you don't got no choice but to see it. But come tap in with the show, DJ, my dog, fam. Chaz Neal, again, I want to say thank you for taking the time to do this. It means a lot to me coming on here, giving me your time. Uh, I'm really excited for people to see this. You put, you got a lot of points in there that I, I registered with, that registered with me, and I think I register with the audience. So, again, I want to say thank you for taking the time to do this. I appreciate you for having me on your platform, giving me exposure, um, and having this interview with me. Like I said, it's about connections. You have a connection with me always. I got a connection with you always, so. I appreciate you for you know inviting me on your show. Yes, sir. Mm, not even, not even a question. No, no worries at all. For sure. Uh, Chaz Neal, thank you again. Chaz, you got any social media that you want to plug in? Anything you want to tell people to go be on the lookout for? Instagram. Uh, you got Chaz Neal ninety nine. Uh, you can have a capital C. It don't matter, but it's Chaz Neal ninety nine. Um, maybe doing a YouTube channel soon. So. I'll plug in with DJ for that. And he, he can share that out with y'all uh, eventually. But, yeah. For sure. Uh, Chaz Neal, again, I want to say thank you. Uh, this has been a blast. been a pleasure. I appreciate it again. I say it all the time. I say it on every episode. It mean a lot to me for sure. But I really appreciate it. Uh, thank y'all for tuning in to this episode. See you on the next episode. If you're tuned into this show through YouTube, make sure you leave a like comment, subscribe, and share this video with anybody you think should tune in. If you're listening to the show through a podcast service or a streaming website, please subscribe to the show, leave a five-star rating, and leave a review. Leave your thoughts down below on what you think about the show.